Hello everyone, what is up? This is Sorry Studios and today is another Friday Favorites. And today's Friday Favorite is my favorite frigate. And my favorite frigate is, as you can see, the Republic Frigate. This set is one of my favorite Clone Wars sets that they've ever made. It's a set that I feel like they probably will never remake, so I'm happy that I have it. It's not like the Venator where I feel like it's a little bit inevitable that LEGO is going to eventually make another Venator class cruiser. But this Republic Frigate, I think its time has come and it's gone. I, I don't think LEGO will make another one. It's possible. But this is it. It's a very nice ship. It looks very nice outside aesthetically and it has a lot of cool features working on the inside. So before we get into that, let's get into, of course, the minifigures. <laughs> First off, our minifigure is a regular wolf pack trooper and a commander wolf, both in phase 1 armor. I just did a minifig Monday on them. I'll put a link right up there to click on so you can watch that. They are two really solid clone minifigures. Both of them come with these nice white clone jetpacks. They have some nice leg printing, front and back torso printing. They come with the bluish gray arms. And their helmets are very nice. The regular clone gets a regular clone head. Here is the helmet for the Wolfpack clone. Very cool design. And for Commander Wolf, a little bit different design of the helmet. He does come with some accessories such as this on his belt and this up here for his helmet comes with two DC pistols his helmet is a little bit different with some nice yellow and red insignia markings there and as you can see his clone face is one of the most uniquest <laughs> it's not a word one of the most unique clone faces that are in existence he has a five o'clock shadow and he has a scar right here on his eye done to him by Asajj Ventress. He also comes with a jetpack. The next minifigure is a Clone Wars Yoda, which we've gotten in several sets, so nothing really too special about him. This is just a standard Yoda. It was nice to get. We do get two exclusive Jedi to this set. We've never gotten them in any other set nor remakes of them so these are the only sets that you can get these jedi in you have an eth cough minifigure with a very nice hair piece mold for his horns and his hair very nice torso printing white arms nice back printing and also you get to see his ponytail right there in the back so very nice and the other exclusive minifigure is quinlan voss you also get to see that the hair printing continues on his torso, which I'm actually a little bit confused about why for Eth Koth, they continued the actual hair ponytails, but for Quinlan Voss, they only printed the ponytail right there. That's an interesting choice by Lego. And we have nice torso printing, some nice bare skin arms, and back printing. With his very iconic yellow line across his face. Now onto the frigate. This is absolutely a beautiful ship. I'll start off by just saying that first of all for playability they have this lovely handle piece. I love it whenever LEGO incorporates a handle into their LEGO sets. It just is allowed for more fun and playability. Up front we have a couple stickers for that windshield, that window piece, the cockpit. And just a look at the ship, it's very beautiful. Some nice greebling on the side, even some underneath detail as well. The underside turrets, underside is obviously not as beautiful as the top. You got these airlocks right here on the side. 
some very nice top design, nice engines in the back, with some more sticker details on top. Overall, just very nice. It's a very nice ship design in general. The landing gear can fold up within itself. Uh, so if you wish, you can fold the landing gear in a way so that it yeah, folds up like this and then back in. So you can disengage the landing gear, you can re-engage the landing gear as such. So it folds up like that and it's ready to fly. And then you can re-engage it um, when you want to land. So starting with the front, we have a very nice satellite communications array disc right here. We have two top guns right here that are stationary, but they are flick fire missiles. I usually don't use them as flick fire missiles, but they can be. So, yep, there's that. And of course, underneath, we have an escape pod. This is obviously not where the escape pods would be, but for playability features and it not be minifig scale, this would be the best place to conceal the escape pod. And I love this mechanism because in order to drop it, you just have to pull this Technic piece here and it falls out. The escape pod also has a couple stickers on it to give it some detail on all sides. And just to open it, you just take it off. You have this nice top piece. And on the inside, you have room to seat minifigs, uh, places to put their weapons, you can seat them on those four spots. You can even seat someone up here. I'm assuming this is sort of like the driver's seat, even though escape pods aren't really designed that way in Star Wars. This is probably what Lego had in mind. Right here are sort of like the escape pod engines, if I were to guess correctly. And yeah, you can fit people in there. You can fit quite a bit of figures actually in this escape pod. This is probably one of the better escape pods implemented into a set that I've ever seen. And then this just comes right back on. And this is what the escape pod looks like when it's disconnected. And in order to reconnect this to the ship, you just put this little Technic piece right back in the the hole. There we go. You can access the cockpit area that is a transparent piece. You can place exactly one minifig in this cockpit. There are no control panels. It's just an empty seat. So, yeah. You can place someone in there if you wish. Going along the side towards the back, we got some Republic insignias, got some nice stickers once again up here on the top. We have two rotating 360 degree turrets that move up and down on both sides of the frigate. Very nicely designed turrets. Both of these panels open up, this one opens up to reveal a control screen of the frigate, a little area to store your weapons, it just goes right in there. One downfall of this set is that there is a lot of open space and gaps that you can see through. It's not really well concealed, unfortunately. And then also in this little area you have this little table that you can put people around as a command post to talk to. And on this table is a hologram of Darth Sidious. You could do some Order 66 scenes in here with that piece. Got some yellow translucent pieces here for like the windows and the lights and stuff. And on each side you have a bottom turret that doesn't rotate 360 degrees but it does go up and down. Close that up and Let's turn the ship around. Over here, if you open this up once again, another turret at the bottom. But you have this very nice Technic mechanism piece right here, which um, 
I'll show you what that does in a moment, which I kind of just did. And there are some spaces to put minifigures in here, but really this is the only thing about this area of the ship is really that it has one of these crates and it keeps a pair of binoculars in it. Just standard Lego binoculars. So those can go back in there. <laughs> now allow me to show you what that does. When you pull this technic piece out, it drops the bombs, which I did accidentally. In order to reload them, you just lift this little top piece up, and they slide right in there. I'm going to pull up the technic piece so you can see that work. That's really what's only keeping them from falling out. It comes with three bombs, it's just two red cylindrical pieces with a grey cone on top. And allow me to just show you an example of dropping the bombs, I'm gonna put that one in there, and this one as well, close that up, and we are going to pull out this Technic piece. Here we go, and there goes the bombs, out the bottom hole right there. That's all there is to it. Moving closer to the back of the ship, we have another turret that uh, almost turns 360 degrees, it's like 355 degrees, pretty much. There is this nice antenna piece, it does get in the way, but it's okay. These also double as for our missiles, so you can, yep, yeah, shoot them. You're supposed to flick them, but uh, I'm not going to. And in the back, another satellite dish that you can maneuver around. And also you get a lovely seat right here, translucent window piece, for the gunner of this turret. I especially like this feature. As you can see, there's a control panel piece for the gunner. And I really like this, uh, I like this feature because I like placing a person up there as the pilot, a person back here as the gunner. It's a very nice feature and it looks really cool for playability when you have two figures in it like such. The engines are pretty beefy. They're very nice. Nothing really to report. And yeah, this is the Republic Frigate. So why is the Republic Frigate my favorite frigate of all of Star Wars? Well, there's been a couple frigates that have come out and gone, and I think you all know by now I'm a very huge Republic Clone Wars era nerd. So this is really the only frigate that came in the Clone Wars era that LEGO has really made. I really enjoy all the playability features in this. I remember getting this as a kid and just being able to do so much with it. Um, carry so many minifigures. I could carry one in the cockpit, one back here. Um, like four more, five more in the escape pod if I wish, so that's seven. I could put people in here. Um, I could probably fit like two in each, maybe even three if I tried hard enough. So that's like 13 minifigures. <laughs> I could fit in this in this baby and that's a I mean, that's a lot of minifigures for a Lego set a lot of these Lego sets that we get nowadays they don't have a lot of room they're really compact and uh, we don't get as much inner interior as I would like such as the like the frigate we got for Rebels uh, with the Ahsoka Tano that one is very cramped that hardly has any space inside to store anything uh, the Tantive 4 that one can that can, can carry a decent amount um, of minifigures, but not as much. It's just it seems like Lego is going more for outward external beauty rather than inward like playability. There doesn't seem like a good there doesn't seem to be like a good balance, really. This one it looks aesthetically pleasing outside. I definitely can see areas where Lego could have made this look better, but I think that in order to get a good amount of interior, a good amount of playability, they did an excellent job. And I like that they went more for playability with this than aesthetically 
pleasing, um, even though it does look like an amazing ship. And don't get me wrong, this ship to fly around and to use, like in a Lego battle, uh, this is a pretty this is a pretty nice ship, especially to go with your Venator class cruiser if you have one. Yeah, so I mean, it's my favorite just because I, I remember playing with it a lot. I remember using this a lot. I remember the different amount of um, the huge amount of usage I was able to get out of this frigate is in fact amazing. The one thing that I wish Lego had done differently is that like the only separatist frigate or like cruiser or whatever that you we could really fight against was the malevolence when that came out that was like a that was kind of a dinky set that was kind of i mean there was no way they were gonna make that anywhere close to minifig scale but they could have made it at least a little bit bigger i ever think i really want lego to make a munificent class cruiser which i don't think they ever will um now that the clone wars is kind of you know, become an obsolete. I, I want, I want them to because you know, there's really nothing that you can use to fight against with your Venator and with this frigate, because you know, there's not a lot of separatist stuff that was made. So you know, this ship was usually used in just like transporting troops and stuff into battle when I played with it as a kid. But who knows? Maybe Lego will make something separatist in the future i highly doubt it i think they would more sooner make a do a remake of a republic ship than make a new separatist ship anyway those are my thoughts on the republic frigate the friday favorites for this week please like comment subscribe down below and check that bell icon so you know when i'm posting new content also let me know what you think about your thoughts on the bad batch series coming soon maybe not soon but like they announced it and i I'm so, so pumped for that. I'm imagining all these really cool Bad Batch sets that they're going to do. I mean, they're obviously going to have to make the shuttle set. Like, Lego's just going to have to make that. I'm just trying to think of, like, uh, the, it's going to be after Order 66. So there's going to be, like, we're going to get a lot of cool, like, I think we're going to get a lot of cool of these, like, Republic-Imperial hybrids. Like, that time where we are transitioning from the Republic to the Imperials. And we're going to see a lot more of these hybrid vehicles and stuff, these early Imperial vehicles that was used early on. Because in Rebels, we sort of got some of that, but that was a good while after Order 66, actually. So we're going to see it right after, and I'm really excited for that. And I hope we get to see a lot of, like, Darth Vader hunting down Jedi and, like, the clones being disgruntled with the Stormtroopers. I just think that the, that Disney, that Lucasfilm can do a lot with that. And I think that Lego can do a lot with benefiting from that show. So let me know down in the comments what you think about that. I'm pumped. I personally am excited. Please smash that like button if you're excited as well. Alright everyone, this is Sora Studios. And as always, I will see you all in the next video.